everyone, welcome to the Tuesday edition of the DC Today. We are down to just one day left in the month of January. I wanted to give you the market recap of today, Tuesday, January 30th, and talk about a couple other quick issues. So we'll go through the market today first because the Dow was up 134 points, but the NASDAQ was down 0.76%. So you had the Dow up over a quarter of a point, the NASDAQ down three quarters of a percent, S&P was down just a tiny bit. So a little bit of a mixed bag. And you had energy uh, was uh, the second best performing sector and financials the best performing sector, both up over 1%, and then real estate, the worst performing sector, down 1%. So an interesting mixed bag. But the bond market is still uh, rallying. The 10-year was down another five basis points today. Uh, the yield down to 4.04% uh, in the bond market. So really interesting set of circumstances. I think a lot of eyes continue to be on the Middle East. What exactly the response to the attack on American lives was over the weekend. Oil prices in the meantime are not overreacting. Uh, look, WTI crude's at 77.88. So it was up 1.4% today, but you're not seeing an 83, 86, $90 kind of spike. It's just been very, very moderate between 75 and 79 since the incident of the weekend. The um, after hours action today and, and into the evening and of course tomorrow will be interesting because you do have both Microsoft and Google reporting this afternoon and uh, other big tech companies still report this week. So that's more likely to be a, a market mover. But so far, you've uh, only had 25% of S&P companies report. Uh, we're tracking for earnings to be up on the quarter, 4.9% year over year, with revenue up um, on the quarter, 2.7% year over year. But with only 25% reporting, those expectations can change very quickly. And not only do you still have 75% of the S&P 500 to report, but you particularly have the biggest companies in this magnificent seven. I think it's six of the seven still to report, um, although two of them reporting t this afternoon. What else do we want to go through? Uh, on the economic front, the JOLTS data revealed just a hair over 9 million jobs that are open. Uh, that was about 275,000 more than expected. So the job openings, obviously nowhere near the 11 million and 10 million we'd seen a couple of years ago, but still well over 9 million, higher than expected. But then the quit rate is down to 2.2%, which is those voluntarily quitting. You say, why does that matter? Because people are more likely to quit when they have a higher expectation of finding another job. They become less likely to quit when those circumstances change. And right now, the quit rate is the lowest in five years. So there's some foreshadowing, you would think, of the job openings data coming down. Um, and Ask David today, somebody asked me, what is the basis for, which I thought was ironic, for calling um, one one hundredth of one percent a basis point? Why not just call it what it is? And again, you'll hear me say something like 30 basis points or 30 bips, and that's a reference to three tenths of one percent. And the number could be 84 and it could be one, but all of it is against a denominator of 100 of a percent. So it's a very clunky and awkward thing to say. And we say it 50 times a day in our business, dealing with bond yields, spreads, market returns, because you're dealing with fractional, marginal, mathematical movements. And so saying three bips as opposed to three one hundredths of 1% uh, is just simply shorthand, and that's the reason. It's organic efficiency. The Fed releases tomorrow. Clients are receiving their weekly portfolio holdings report tomorrow at the dctoday.com, as well as at our YouTube page. We have the link to uh, the highlight reel of me being on set with Stuart Varney and Fox Business today. And other than that, that's all I got. I am back with you again tomorrow in the DC Today. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and thank you for reading the DC Today. Mm -hmm.